Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing all the arteries that branch off of the abdominal aorta. So we are now looking at the part of the descending aorta underneath the thoracic diaphragm, or just called the diaphragm. So remember the diaphragm is really the major skeletal muscle involved in inhalation, breathing in. And so there's a hole in the diaphragm called the aortic hiatus. And so it's a hole that allows this aorta to descend through it downwards. And so above the diaphragm, it would be the thoracic aorta. Below it, it's the abdominal aorta. And so we're going to look at all these branches that are coming off of it. Now, before we go any further, let's clear up a couple of things. Okay? Uh, these circles right here, right on the center part of the aorta, these are really just representing arteries that are coming off of it that are not paired. Okay, There's just one coming off, usually kind of out toward the screen, toward you, kind of in that orientation. And these ones over here, uh, generally speaking, unless I've indicated otherwise, uh, like the blue and green ones, all of these in red, these are all paired arteries. So there'd be one on this side, this is the patient's left, they'd also be over here on the right. I'll try to make that clear whenever we go over each one of them. So let's go through these. So first of all, we have this branch coming off really quick after this aorta descends through the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm, and it's called the inferior phrenic artery. Now, there is also a superior phrenic artery, but that branches off of the thoracic aorta right before it descends through the aortic hiatus. And this inferior phrenic artery is going to supply mainly the lower part of the diaphragm. The superior phrenic artery, which came off of the thoracic aorta, supplies the upper part of the diaphragm. So again, we're right underneath the diaphragm, so it would make sense to have this branch coming off right here, supplying the diaphragm. But coming off of the inferior phrenic artery, we have this one right here, which is the superior suprarenal artery. Now you'll notice that we have a superior middle and inferior suprarenal artery. We'll get to those. Um, and it's just interesting that the suprarenal gland, also called the adrenal gland, being as small as it is, has three arteries on each side that supply it. So that's actually rather interesting. So actually the adrenal gland gets three separate arteries on each side, so six total. That should tell you how important the adrenal gland is for all sorts of things, including the sympathetic response and endocrine response. So that's the superior suprarenal artery. It branches from the inferior phrenic. Now, the middle suprarenal artery comes directly off of the abdominal aorta. This plays a role in supplying the adrenal gland. And we also have uh, this artery right here, which is called the first lumbar artery. That comes directly off of the abdominal aorta, and actually all of the lumbar arteries do. They come directly off of the abdominal aorta. Now, the lumbar arteries are a series of arteries that supply some of the deep muscles in the core. Um, if you look this up online, you'll actually see that the major muscle they supply is quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum is not really a muscle that's very involved in any kind of gross movement. It's more of a postural muscle. Um, and so it actually has to have a decent blood supply to maintain posture for as long as we have to stand or sit up all day. Also, these lumbar arteries supply the internal oblique muscle, which is a little bit more on the anterior side of the core, and then the transversus abdominis, which is deep to the internal oblique, and that actually really spans from the anterior part of the core all the way posteriorly. So a lot of those core abdominal muscles in the quadratus lumborum, they are supplied by these lumbar arteries. Okay, So this one up here is just the first lumbar artery. Now, below that branches off the renal artery. Okay, the renal artery supplies the kidneys. Okay, so this comes off here, and this one would actually supply the patient's left kidney. The right one would be over here. Again, all of these in red are paired, left and right. So this is your renal artery. Now, coming off of the renal artery is the inferior suprarenal artery. This is the third artery that supplies the suprarenal gland, or the adrenal gland on each side. So that comes off of the renal artery. 
Below that, we have a gonadal artery. So the gonadal artery supplies the gonads. So in females, it would supply the ovary, and so it would be called the ovarian artery to be gender specific. In males, it would supply the testicles, so it would be the testicular artery. When you see the term gonadal artery, you are implying that we're just talking generally in humans, we're not specifying a gender, but if you did know the gender, you would need to be specific and call it either the ovarian arteries or the testicular arteries. And then beneath the gonadal arteries, we have just the last three of the lumbar arteries. We have the second lumbar artery, third and fourth. In some individuals, there's also a fifth, but that one's more of a genetic variation. Okay? We'll come back and talk about this one at the end. So those are all of the paired arteries. Okay? There's a left and right for each of those. These ones coming off of the center... So somewhere in the anterior side, or the middle anterior side of the abdominal aorta, these are not paired. The largest of these, and also the most superior right here, is the celiac trunk. Now immediately, immediately after it comes off of the abdominal aorta, it gives off these three branches. And so we're going to discuss these now. Uh, these are the common hepatic artery, the left gastric artery, and the splenic artery, or splenic artery. Now over here, let's talk about these first. They're the simplest. The left gastric artery. Left gastric artery supplies the esophagus and the liver. Now that might be a little bit unintuitive because generally speaking when we think about gastric we think of the stomach but gastric really just refers to anything in the uh, digestive tract. Okay, It's just that a lot of times it refers to the stomach but not necessarily here. So the left gastric artery supplies the a lower part of the esophagus and then some of the liver. Okay? And it's the smallest branch of the celiac trunk. We also have the splenic artery, which gives blood supply to the spleen, and it's the largest branch of the celiac trunk. Now, the splenic artery goes all the way to the spleen, but in that time, before it gets to the spleen, it gives off several branches right here. The first one is the pancreatic branch, which, as you would imagine, supplies the pancreas. It then gives off the short gastric branch, which supplies the stomach. And then it gives off the left gastroepiploic artery, which is going to supply the greater omentum and the stomach. And it's going to be the inferior part of the stomach, which is nearer the greater curvature. Okay? Remember, if you're looking at the stomach, the inferior part that has the larger curve is the greater curvature. The superior part of it with the smaller curve is the lesser curvature. So the left gastroepiploic artery supplies that greater omentum and the greater curvature part of the stomach, so the inferior part. After the splenic artery gives off all three of these branches in this order, it'll then continue on to the spleen where it enters via the hilus. Okay? Again, these two are not paired. Right? Now, the third branch, also not paired, is the common hepatic artery. Now, the common hepatic artery gives off three branches. The first one is the right gastric artery. Notice the right and left gastric arteries have different sources. The left gastric artery over here is a direct uh, branch of the celiac trunk, whereas the right gastric artery comes off of the common hepatic artery. The right gastric artery supplies the lesser omentum, and the stomach its superior part, which is the lesser curvature. Okay, So the lesser curvature of the stomach, which is the superior part. So the right gastric artery in some ways uh, actually supplies the other half of the stomach, which is provided by the left gastroepiploic artery. Okay, So right gastric artery, lesser omentum, lesser curvature of the stomach. The second branch of the common hepatic artery is the gastroduodenal or gastroduodenal artery. Now, in general, this artery is going to supply um, parts of the duodenum and other parts of the, of the digestive tract. Not necessarily the stomach, although it does give a few branches to the stomach. The two major branches are the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the right gastroepiploic artery. So the pancreaticoduodenal artery, we'll focus on this, this actually supplies part of the pancreas and then the duodenum. So the duodenum is the, part of the, the proximal part of the small intestine where most digestion actually occurs in the small intestine. And so you have to have a decent blood supply to this area in order to get those enzymes and those secretions from the pancreas 
into the duodenum. So this plays a role in that. This one is just supplying the superior part of that. There is also an inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery that we'll see in a minute branches from the superior mesenteric artery. Okay? But the gastroduodenal artery gives off superior pancre pancreaticoduodenal artery and right gastroepiploic artery. Then the common hepatic artery uh, branches into the third branch, which is, which is the proper hepatic artery. This one is proper because it's going directly to the liver. And when it gets just up close to the liver, it bifurcates into a left hepatic artery and a right hepatic artery. And of course, the left hepatic artery supplies the left half of the liver, and the right hepatic artery supplies the right half. So you can see there that the celiac trunk really, through its three major branches, common hepatic, left gastric and splenic supplies a humongous quantity of the GI tract. However, if we want to get blood to more of the distal parts of the GI tract, so after the duodenum, uh, we really need the, the mesenteric arteries. So the second non-paired artery of the abdominal aorta is the superior mesenteric artery. Now I don't have the specific arteries here shown, but again, the major things it's going to supply are the duodenum, pancreas, a little bit of the large intestine, small intestine, and it also contributes to a marginal artery. Now, when we're talking about the superior mesenteric artery, if we really want to get specific here, it's going to supply the pancreas, all of the small intestine, that is the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. It's also going to supply the cecum area of the large intestine, the ascending colon, and the transverse colon. Once you get to the junction between the transverse and the descending colon, you're going to switch blood supplies down to inferior mesenteric. So if you really want to sum up the superior mesenteric artery, it's supplying the GI tract between after the pyloric sphincter, so right where the duodenum starts, and then all the way up to the splenic flexure, which is the interface between the a transverse and descending colon. All of that supplied by superior mesenteric artery and then the pancreas. Okay? The third branch of the abdominal aorta down here that's non-paired is the inferior mesenteric artery. And this picks up where the superior mesenteric artery leaves off. So the inferior mesenteric artery is going to be supplying the descending colon, which occurs after that splenic flexure, the sigmoid colon, the upper rectum, and also it's going to contribute as well to the marginal artery, which was also supplied via the superior mesenteric artery. So the marginal artery is going to be supplied by both superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. Now, that really brings us to the base of the abdominal aorta. And it's really going to bifurcate into three branches, two of which are the ones you always talk about, and those are these. The, this one is the uh, right common iliac artery. This one is the left common iliac artery. Those are the two that everyone always thinks of. But there's one little branch down here at the bottom that pales in comparison to the size of these two, and that is the median sacral artery. This one descends directly downward, and so you could also say this one is unpaired as well. Um, this one descends downward and supplies a little bit of the lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum, and the coccyx. So those bones need blood supply as well, and so uh, in part it's going to be supplied by that median sacral artery. So hopefully this video gave you a decent overview of all the branches that are coming off of the abdominal aorta. And in the next video, we're going to continue by looking at the common iliac arteries and then eventually external iliac and internal iliac. So join us in those. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.